My friends, and welcome to part 129 of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Let's Play series. So, before I begin, I'll go ahead and look at the news, but I think first I'm gonna go ahead and do a dual live so I don't forget about that. Maybe you'll even be able to, like, catch, like, one last glimpse of some of the decks that were used in the festival. Actually, I think since this is live, I don't think you they, they would show something like that. Okay, this is pretty cool, though. It's like Crystal Beast Heroes versus Flow Wonderies. So, of course, this is Flow Wonderies without the bear statue since it's banned. See how good they are with the banning of the bear statue. I think they should still be pretty good, like, they still got a lot of, like, recursion and stuff. Did anyone try playing Flo Wonderies in the Exceed Festival? And if so, like, what would you think about them in the Exceed Festival? Was this card allowed in the Exceed Festival? I'm not sure. That's actually a really nice card for the deck. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, because they all all win wing beasts. I believe the Apex Avian was still allowed in that Exceed Festival. Yeah, Future Fusion, still pretty good. A little bit slow, but still really good. Um, let's see, what? Fusion. Probably showing off the Crystal Beast. See, that's one of the things about it, though. If your opponent destroys it, like, you don't, you no longer get the effect. Oh, so, did the opponent just, did the hero player just pass turn? I don't know. Well, I mean, not the, actually, this isn't a bad hand. I don't think the Neos Fusion is actually too bad. Although, yeah, with this, with the M-Pen being on the board, it does make it a little bit harder since M-Pen has really good effects against special summon monsters. I believe, um, oh yeah, attack position, special summon monsters cannot activate the effects. Pretty crazy effect. Kind of opposite to, um, what Baguska does. But Baguska is still a little bit better, not just because it affects all monsters, normal and special summon, but also because, um, unlike Baguska, M-Pen doesn't automatically change them to attack position. So you can still just special summon your monsters in defense position and be able to, like, activate their effects. But if you tried special summoning monsters in defense position on a Baguska, you wouldn't be able to activate their effects. So it looked like that was a pretty easy win for Flow Wonderies, although the hero play wasn't, um, if the hero play would have been allowed to get the, in, to like use instant fusion, that may have been pretty good. I'm not sure exactly what the plan was, but, I mean, instant fusion is usually a pretty good card when you can pull it off. It's just that, like, you need to be able to, like, wait long enough to be able to pull it off. And you, if your opponent has a way to get rid of it, that kind of stinks. Anyway, um, here's the news. Let's see. Oh, yeah, new accessories. I decided to get this one, the gigantic sprite. Pretty cool, pretty cool. I like that one. Yeah, I'm not sure if I actually have to go in the shop because, like, you can probably see, like, a lot of it here. Like, you don't... The, like, there's not really much to see. Exorcists. What I like is that, like, I think you can still, like, have the dual, have the sleeves available when you're, like, doing the My Deck duel. I think so. I think they allow you to keep your sleeves. No, actually, I don't think it is. I think the only thing they allow you to keep is a mate. But I think they at least let you still keep it when you're playing the loners. 
They still don't have a totally awesome sleeve, though. Oh, well, Gigantic Sprite is still the next best thing, since, like, Gigantic Sprite can still be technically support for the Frog, since they are also level 2 monsters. Um, at least all the good ones are. And then Exorcist is Magnifica. Should be good for those Exorcists player. I think, which apparently aren't as good as Sprite, but I still think they're pretty good. Like, they were pretty good for the Exceed Festival, too. Um, and they're not bad against Sprite, because, like, Sprite has a few ways, have a few things that that they need to, like, special summon out of the graveyard. They have a few ways so it does stop some of their best plays, like the Sprite Elf like has a harder time under against Exo Sisters because it wants to special summon stuff from the graveyard. Um, and then also the Sprite Smashers technically too, because the Sprite Smashers usually banishes from the graveyard for cost. So yeah, it has a little bit of a hard time. And then the Exceed Black is pretty cool. Because this fits right in with my um, mostly exceed um, sprite deck. And then a new gate, which I'll be going into. So you don't really need to look at that too much. Oh yeah, this is like an all loner deck event. So this should be pretty cool. Hopefully the prizes are pretty good. I'm looking forward to that. And I think this is a survey that doesn't net you anything, so you can take it if you want, but it doesn't matter if you do or don't. I hope everyone received the prizes for the power pros. I'm not sure if... I don't... I'm not sure if you can miss out on that or not, like... I think as long as you get to it soon enough, you shouldn't be missing out. Like, if, like, you miss a day, I think you should be able to get it if you, as long as you get to it soon enough. And then these are like old news. Um, oh yeah, see, they had to emergency ban this card because they forgot about it. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, by the time I got into Exceed Festival, it was already emergency ban. Man, why do I always have to miss on the fun s out on the fun stuff like this? Oh, yeah, the ban list. I guess I never went over these. Um, pretty cool. Like, some cards are being lifted. Some cards are being semi-limited. I'm not, I don't really play... I don't, I don't really care too much about the Runic deck anymore. Um, I tried out, but I didn't really like it. It wasn't really my style. I think I prefer, like, decks that, like, win a little bit quicker than it would. So, I don't think it's really my style. I think I prefer just, like, straight for more straightforward sprite decks that, like, try to win through, like, bow damage. So, I think I'm playing more of that. So, the, n none of these, like, um, banless hits really matter too much to me. But there, there they are if you want to, like, look. And I don't really play the Verde in my sprite deck. Um, because I don't, I don't know if it's, like, really all that great, because, like, the problem is, if you, like, if you do all your plays and you're locked out of level 2s, which is pretty easy, uh, out of nothing but level 2s, which is pretty easy to be, um, you can't really go into, um, the, the Destiny Hero guy, so, because he's, like, level 8, so... I don't really care too much. And maintenance and issues. So, secret pack issue. A few card issues. A few other kinds of issues. You can take a look at these if you want. I don't really care too much. I guess I'll just go into them real quick. So you can feel free to pause and read them if you want. Therion, I don't really care too much about Therion. And then here's a few miscellaneous issues. Yeah, another card issue that I don't really play. Sea material. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that's talking about, but I guess 
It's good that they fix it, whatever it was. I wasn't really noticing anything. And then he has another maintenance known as probably, um, probably maintenance to get, um, to put in the, maybe it was maintenance for the gate, or maybe it, it it's future maintenance to put in that new festival, the loner thing. Um, that should be pretty fun, though. I'm not sure if it is going to take the place of a festival, if it's going to be its own short little thing. But it sounds funny the way. Um, yeah, and then... Did I show off all the new accessories? I think so. I don't think there's really anything else. Oh yeah, I didn't. I guess I didn't notice that there's runic really found, but I think the gigantic sprite um sleeves are much better. And there's that. Okay, so now I'm going going to go into Rika's. So this should be fun. And the cool thing is, oh, I was wondering if I could go into it from there, but I guess not. So you have to go into it the old-fashioned way. That would be really cool if you could go into it from there but then you won't be able to see the gate details so anyway the gate details read the Rika flutter down into winter sky and show their splendor in a thousand different ways in a moment until it fades they share countless moments of wonder um so um fun fact that I learned um that I just recently um learned is that um their fan translation is snowflower so basically because that that's why they're plants but they're like basically portraying plants in the winter time which is pretty cool like the kinds of plants that like grow during winter time like <clears throat> I do know there are plants that like that that can like still be growing during the winter time, which is pretty cool. Anyway, here's the first scenario. Oh, and then I'll look at the scenario appearance cards later, give you a better look at what they were. The Rika Fairies Ascend is what the story is. Like fluttering petals, floating in the wind, they dance. Like floating petals, flowing on a gentle breeze, they fly. From the chilling sky, the night falls. Snow and ice cover this vast land and color the world white. Though destined to pass and fade, their beauty persists. They fall upon all, even on the flowers they bow, that burrow out of sight. Even as winter approaches, these flowers still bloom strong and proud. See, these are the ones that, like, on a fair of the winter. The ice sh shard on the flower's petal begins as... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, hold on, I need to look at this. Um, the icy shaw and the pa flowers petal. Oh, wait. Is this the whole thing? Though destined to pass and fade, their beauty persists. They fall upon all, even on the fl flowers that burrow out of sight. Even as winter approaches, these flowers still bloom strong and proud. The icy shaw on the flowers petal begins as a droplet. The droplet soon blooms into a brilliant crystal of white ever so beautifully. Those who dwell in flowers are born from blossoms are the Rika fairies. As colorful as the flowers that decorate the world, the fairies take on so many forms. They appear as fair maidens with gorgeous parasols in hand. The secret of these snow flowers remains under wraps.
I wonder if they meant to call attention to their fan translating. Or if that was just a coincidence. Hmm. I wonder. I think Konami does understand that. I, th I think Konami is aware of the kinds of like fan translator names that people do give these cards. What I'm wondering though is apparently people even think of fan translator names for TCG exclusive archetypes. I don't understand how they could get the name wrong for TCG exclusive archetypes. Like for instance, I just found out that apparently some people thought the mute. Mutant Mutant would be called Mutant Mutator before it came out. How do people even get that if it's supposed to be a TCG exclusive archetype? I don't get it. For OCG cards, I understand. They're, they're just like um, mistranslating it or like trying their best to translate it directly from the Japanese language. Which, it's not always a direct translation because a lot of the times Konami puts its own spin on it. to so, so they can make it work better for them. Or maybe, for example, with like the ex Exorcisters, if they kind of got to remove like the R for like a dash. Like, so that it doesn't like, um, I feel like this is a reason because it would have like sound too much like exorcism and they don't really want to call attention to like religious stuff so i think in a way that was kind of like a, a form of censorship when bringing into a tcg um fun f f a, a little bit of a fun fact right there um so yeah but yeah like if anyone knows like how people can like um how people can even get the name wrongs or how they can even be fan translations for um s for ones that are supposed to be TCG exclusive because i mean do japanese um still i mean i guess if japanese artists still creates TCG exclusive archetypes but i don't think so like why would they create TCG exclusive archetypes too like I'm pretty sure it's an art team that's located within the TCG that creates those. So, I, I don't get it. Maybe someone can help share a lot on that. Like, how, like, s something like Mut Mutator can come to be for, like, a TCG exclusive archetype. If you want to stand. I, ho I, ho I hope you understand what I'm talking about there. For those who knew about that. Um, and then this is just a fact, so it's just gonna, like, tell me exactly what I'm gonna do. So hopefully I can get to an actual duel to, like, show off, like, what I would do if I was playing the deck. Um, what makes a Rika, uh, uh, yeah, Rika deck unique? Some people say it's Rika. I don't think so. I think it's Rika. Because Rika just sounds stupid, if you ask me. But of course, like, I don't mean to anger anyone who does say Rika. I just, I just, I just think Rika sounds a lot better. Um, anyway, it says this deck features an effect that is triggered by tributing itself or other plant type monsters and multiple monsters with effects that are triggered by other monsters being tributed. In particular, Teardrop the Rika Queen has a has an effect that tributes you or your opponent's monsters, and also has an effect triggered when a monster has been tributed. This monster serves as a centerpiece of the Rika deck, also with effects that change a monster's combination and levels. You can also interchangeably use rank four, six, eight, exceed sevens as well. Also, I have another, I, I, I have another, um, thing I'm wondering about, um, I wonder if Konami, um, meant to put this, um, Rika Solomo gate out now, um, since the Rika cards are about to get, a bunch of the expensive ones are about to get reprinted in Maze of Memories. I wonder if they did on purpose because they foresee a lot of people maybe wanting to pick up the Rika deck. I wonder if they did it 
to try to get people excited and so maybe more people would buy the Maze of Memories. Or if this is just a complete coincidence. Because I know that th this is mostly like taking like... Like I, th I think the OCG is mostly looking at this. But I think the TCG probably looks at this a little... At this game a little bit as well. So I don't know. Maybe it's a coincidence, or maybe they did on purpose. Maybe the OCG does work with the TCG, and the TCG tells them a little bit about what sets are coming out, and the OCG is like, okay, we'll try to work around that sometimes, occasionally. I don't know. Maybe it is just a coincidence. Okay. Yeah, of course it's a it's a Rika Mia match because that's always how it is at first. We're both playing pure. Well, maybe not exactly pure, but I think like um close enough to pure. That's usually how it is. Um, use the effect of Rika monsters to your advantage and win the duel in this turn. Try summoning Rika pedal. Okay, well, occasionally my opponent does even play an extra deck, but this time. We both are, so that's pretty cool. I f it's probably better that my opponent is anyway, because I I, th I think, like, Rika's are, are, are a lot about the X decks. See, maybe, like, Ghost Tricks and um, some of the other decks could technically work without an X deck, but I feel like an X deck is somewhat important to a Rika um, deck. I, I, th I mean, they could probably play without one. So it could have probably gone either way. Oh yeah, this is pretty cool. It lets me search for a Rika monster. I can see why people like Rika Petal. It adds Snowdrop. Isn't it any? I think it's any. Yeah, it's any monster. So I think you usually want to add to your hand. But I guess sometimes sending it to a graveyard could be t good too. Activate the effect of Snowdrop the Rika Fairy just add to your hand. Tribute Rika Petto from your field. Then special summon Snowdrop the Rika Fairy and Erica the Rika Fairy from your hand. There probably are Rika monsters that have graveyard effects. Or even if they're not, right now, like, it's always good to, like, be able to have the option in case they ever want to, um, print something. Print a card in the Octype that does have a graveyard effect. Ooh, it special summons both. That's really nice. Now activate the other effect of Snowdrop the Rika Fairy. By matching the levels of the plant type monsters you control, Exceed Summon will be easier to achieve. Select Snowdrop the Rika Fairy itself as the target for this effect. And level Erica the Rika Fairy to level 8. Yeah, I think usually you probably want to go for the higher ranks um exceed summons so i think i picked this yeah now you have two level eight monsters on your field try exceed summoning teardrop the weaker queen of course sometimes you do want to go for the lower rank exceed summons if it fits you better you don't always go for the high exceeds high ranked exceed summon just because you're thinking Oh, it's a high rank. That must mean it's better. That's not always true. Exceed summon successful. Teardrop the Rika Queen has the effect of tributing a targeted monster on either side of the field. When this exceed monster uses a plant type monster as a succeed material, this effect can be triggered even during your opponent's turn. Now activate Teardrop the Rika Queen with the opponent's monster as a target. So what is that doing? Oh. It's tripping in a monster. So I wonder, did Rika's come out first, or did like um, or did um? Okay, and then game two hundred for tripping a monster, or did the um, Diablo stack come out first? That 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 new Diablos with the layer of darkness. I wonder which one. Um. I'm not exactly sure, but like these are both about tributing. So I wonder if this helped to like if one helped to kind of ex inspire the other. No. 
Anyway, let's get into this next one. I think I'll stop and I'll do a pack opening. It's going to be a little bit over, but I want to show, like, off the deck in, like, a... Like, I want to show off the deck in actual duel now. Oh, wait, I shouldn't show that. It's it's this one. I, I've... I, forgot I completely forgot to show off this one so I'm not gonna read the effects but I will go through the artwork so for those of you wondering which card showed up in the scenario and it's pretty cool how sometimes they just sh like show up but because of like their background images but occasionally they show up in the scenario as the actual card forms Anyway, um, so here's the rewards I get for this. I got a Rika Con Con. Oh, I wonder if this is new. I'm not sure if this one's new or not. May th this might be new. I think Rika's were here before this um Solomon gate, but I think th if if they were already here, I think this is a new card. I'm not sure. Someone can like um inform others like if like Rika's like like if there were cards in this game for Rika's before this Solomon Gate or um or if the or if the cards are completely new now that this Solomon Gate is here. I think it's probably that they're just like a few new cards because of the Solomon Gate and not that the whole deck is new. I could be wrong. Um, don't really want to look it up. Anyway, this is a feel spell, so it's probably pretty good. It lets you, like, set Rika spell and traps directly from your deck, so it's probably pretty good. It does have a special summon restriction on it, but, like, that's, like, except for plant types. And there's a lot of good plant type monsters, so I don't think that's too much of a... Restriction. I think a lot of the other cards kind of have that restriction too, anyway. Um, and then the deck description, the dual description here reads Many Rika cards have powerful effects, but they often require to tribute a plant type monster on your field. Pay attention to the number of plant type monsters on your field. Your opponent's deck has many monsters that trigger their effects when they are destroyed in battle. However, you can use the monster effect of Teardrop the Weaker Queen to tribute them and block their, these effects. I wonder if, if, if Konami um, tried to combine this deck with the uh, um, Lair of Darkness because they kind of both like share like a, a tribute mechanic. Yeah, Lone Fire Blossom. Yeah, of course. Really good for any plant deck, really. Like, if you're playing a plant deck, you definitely want to play Lone Fire. Because it just special summons any of your plants from the deck, which is really good. So you can special summon any of these. Um, can special. It's probably really good just to like special summon the lone fi all of the lone fire blossoms out right at out the gate. Actually, maybe that is a good idea because it's not a hard once per turn, and then this way I um filter more cards out of my deck. Yeah, okay, I think I'm gonna do the Rika, the Rika pedal now. And I should probably add the one that can special summon two monsters out of the hand. Yeah, it's this one. Yeah, that's basically what they were showing me. This is kind of like another way you can like go into this play though pretty cool you pretty much I think like 
want to go with the highest level one. I think in a case like this, it generally is a good idea just to like go for the highest rank. I'm already. Oh yeah, and they're also the sort of combining it with the aroma a roam mage. It's I I think this is the only a roam mage you're playing, so but this is pretty much it's not really being played for the gain life points effect because I'm not sure if there's really any way of gaining life points like that natural to the Arikas. I think it's more just being played for um if your life points happen to be lower you can like activate the effect that lets you special summon a plan from your deck. Which is going to happen if you're, like, winning on life points. Like, simply attacking could make you, help make you high on life points. I think in this case, I'm going to go ahead and do the, go for the teardrop. Yeah. That seems good. Or well, actually, I wonder if... Hmm... I wonder, maybe I should have just attacked with them. Oh well. I don't think either one of these have graveyard effects. Oh, th this one has a graveyard effect. That's cool. But I'm not gonna activate it just yet. Wow. Okay. Probably fine because now <laughs> because now I can just um destroy that by bow. And I bet these traps are pretty good. Yeah, it looks good. Too bad it's not a qu oh it is a quick effect. That's cool. Tribute a monster on the field. Yeah, I think I better do that. Ooh. But I think I'm just gonna use her effect. Cool. And now because I'm tributing it, my opponent can't tribute it for its effect. Has another one? Are you kidding me? Wow. Yeah, I might as well. Wait, what's this effect? Hmm. And now I can use this as tribute fire so I don't have to get rid of the exceed. That's nice. Cool. I might as well now that I have a good monster tribute. So I could. I think I can tribute out two now. Oh, I can special summon the Lone Fire. I forgot I had Lone Fire in there. Or I could also do the Rika Petal. But I think I'm just going to do Lone Fire. Might as well. Lone Fire is really good. Wow, that sucks. Now I can't s use its effect. Okay, so I'll tribute that one off. Special summon. Oh, I do. I am playing the at least a few of all mages. I wonder if I should special. Oh yeah, Mardell. This is how you can play Mardell. Ooh, it allows me to add a plant. I don't know if it's necessary. What does this one do? 
Ooh, that's not bad. Ooh. Hmm. Wow. I think I'm just... Hmm. Unfortunately, my life points on higher than my opponent's. Yeah, still, maybe I should just go for the level 9 thing. Wait, that's all it does? I don't know, like... I think a lot of the other generators is a lot better, but still, adding any plan isn't too bad. Oh, wow. I think I'm going to go with Snowdrop. So now I can have all of my monsters become level 8, basically. Even this guy. So that's cool. Yeah. Not doing that. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll just go with this. Another one of these. I guess I can do this one. Cool. Cool. Nice, it'll just keep gaining. Maybe I should just do an evil thorn here. Cool. Then those two will gain another 200. And then I can go for another level 8. But, hmm, that's pretty good. I think I will go for this one. And then it really doesn't matter what I call because maybe I should just call the wrong name. I don't even care. Because now I can just activate this effect to make sure this car isn't a problem either. What does that do? Oh! Cool, I get to add to my hand. That's cool. Okay, this is game here. Good, pretty good. Oh, you know, uh, an another deck that might not be bad to pair up with Rika's are Sylvans. Rika Con Con. 
Ah, uh, man, I don't have enough. How am I supposed to get those orbs? It's probably from this. Yeah, it's from that. But I'll look into that later. For now, I'll just do, um... Oh, please. No, 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 no. For now, I'm gonna do a, um, pack opening. Please don't tell me. Okay. Yeah, let's just do a few legacy packs. Okay, looks like I'm getting Emperor Maju Gazette, the Fang of Critias. Good for, um, oh yeah, that's good if you want to play that fusion monster that goes alongside it. You probably do want to make sure you have quite a few trap cards if you are playing this card, though. Uh, Mask of Darkness, Birthright, Guiltia, the D Knight. Probably pretty good with Palozoics, actually, this card. Since, like, you send it to the graveyard. Or, like, you could also send other um, traps that have graveyard effects, too. And, like, they will still be able to um, be useful because of their graveyard effects. Um, Guiltia, the D-Knight, Koitsu, um, Mo Mo Moai... Interceptor Cannons, Yamato, No Kami, Mere Ladybug, Fairy Witch, Sonic Maid, Copper Avenger, Fungi of the Musk, Rod of the Mind's Eye, Fulfillment of the Contract, Crashbug Road. I kind of like this one because like, it allows you to special summon card from your hand, so it allows you to extend. Um. And I believe you can even activate this even if your opponent doesn't have a monster. So, like, if only if you're going first and only you have a monster, like, only you're going to be the one that's able to special summon something. So, this could be good in a deck with, like, a lot of, like, like leveled monsters. As long as they're, like, level 4 or lower. Um, pretty nice, but, like, I mean, like, a lot of the decks are, like, have a lot of spell summoning already, but it still f seems fun. Um, House of Adhesive Tape, Cross Attack, Volcanic Eruption, and Fortune Report. So I think I'm going to give it to Crash Bug Road. That's the final one for the playset, so that's nice too. And if I have to do a new one, I think I'll just go with Birthright, because it special summons a monster from the graveyard. It has to be normal, but still, like, Special summon, not too bad. Um, yeah. And then, not really too many great options with new, anyway. So anyway, if anyone has anything to say about these cards, whether they want to say which one was their favorite for any reason, they can feel free, or if they would like to give a few facts about any of these cards and multiples, they can feel free. Anyway, I would like to thank everyone who stayed for the um duels maybe the pack opening and for those who stayed for multiple um sections also i would like to thank and i would like to especially thank a uh, give, give a big thank you to everyone who stayed for the entire video and i also have this in the description for those who missed who missed this part okay i'll go into the outro now Please like, share, and subscribe, and consider ringing that notification bell for regular content. You can either ring the notification bell to be notified of all my videos or personalized by simply clicking the notification bell and selecting all are personalized. All is being notified about all my videos, whether you watch them or not, and personalized is being notified of the videos that you watch the most. Also, if you would like to leave a comment, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, you can leave a comment about anything, either pertaining to the video, pertaining to the verse I leave in the description, or just something random if you'd like. Just please keep it appropriate. 
You can even leave an emote if you would like, but just be aware that it may lock you out if you um, paste too many of the same emote in a day. Just in case, like, if you decide one day you just paste um, emotes on a whole bunch of my videos. Just keep that in mind. Um, usually you can fix that by either going with a different emote or by posting multiples of that emote. Um, instead of just the one. Um, um, th and thank you everyone who do watch um, my, my videos. And a big thanks to those who do um, watch all of my videos. But still thank you to everyone who only watches... Um, a couple once in a while or just watches um one one of the games i understand how it is no matter how you do it it just appreciated um n no matter what no matter how you decide to go about um viewing my videos